guys, welcome back to D Page TV. I am D Page, and today, let's try this again. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to D Page TV. I am D Page, and today's video I'm going to react to is 10 Worst Wrestling Belts Downgraded by the channel. Okay, let's try this again. Look at us, Rhea. Look at us. Okay, this is good. Hey, everybody, welcome back to D Page TV. I am D Page. And today's video I'm going to be reacting to is 10 Worst Wrestling Belts Downgrades and by the channel Parts Fun Known. So, before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel as well as like, comment, and definitely share my videos. And without further ado, let's go ahead and see what Adam Blompier has in store for us. Oh, wait. Okay, there we go. Look at us reacting to stuff. We got our finger on the pulse of the discourse. And sure, I'm imagining that a lot of websites have suddenly hurried out a 10 bad belts list this week. But have any of them had my same dry wit? Willy bum pop pop, exactly. So for a reason that we'll very soon get to, we got a hankering to talk about bad belts. We've talked about terrible belt designs in the past. Have a watch of this list, for example. But this time around, we're specifically talking about when a belt had a good design. And for some reason, known only to a wrestling promoter, the hippest cat in all of sports. I mean, who has better? taste and Vince McMahon here he is sat in front of a giant portrait of himself for some reason they take that beautiful belt and proceed to wipe their cultural taint with it I'm Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known here are our 10 worst wrestling belt downgrades Number 10, World Heavyweight Championship. I don't like it though. I've asked everyone in the office if they like the new World Heavyweight Championship belt and only Dan Layton like said yes. And he also thinks that Thor The Dark World is a good film. So here's a picture of the pinch of salt we'll be taking his opinions with. I asked editor Rich what he thought and he said he thought it looked like a bum hole. And now I won't be able to unsee that. And how about you don't be able to unsee that as well? It really is almost what we want isn't it? Which just seems to be WWE's way of doing things in 2023. The big logo, the weird little bubble which sticks out just too much to look like a weird button that you'd use to summon hyper-masculine room service. The fact there's just slightly too much leather around the edge of the gold design making it look a bit squashed and it's all vague like the... I can't actually see any of the etching on it. I mean no one likes change and it might grow on us but it's nowhere near as good as the big gold. And speaking yeah. of, number nine, the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. It's a little bit of a cheat as we're essentially making two entries about a wrestling company taking the big gold belt design and downgrading it for no human reason whatsoever. However, this time around, it was in WCW in the early 90s. Turns out it takes 30 years for people to forget it's a bad idea to f*** with the big G. So, Jim Hurt, the WCW head honcho who thought that Ric Flair wasn't over anymore and should cut his hair short and become a sp Because of this idiot changing Ric Flair to Sparry Kiss and taking a pain cut, that's why Ric Flair decided to go to WWE and they made him the WWE World Champion, WWF World Champion, because Jim Hurt is a complete idiot. So, yeah, they really shot themselves in the foot when they try to, like, you know, change his character. Because, no, you can't change Ric Flair. I mean, stupid decision. Spartacus, you know, the guy that hounded Flair out of the company and into WCW's competition for almost two years. Him. Well, turns out another one of his very excellent Gold Star Attaboy Champ ideas was scrapping the big gold design of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship after Flair's departure, ordering a brand new belt. And well, we say a brand new belt. Here is what WWE were using as their world championship at the time, Winged the eagle. vaunted Winged Best Eagle. Best. And here is a design Jim Hurd ordered. The sincerest form of flattery, I suppose. It lasted for two years before they reverted back to the big gold after Heard was gone from the company. Good. Number eight, the Intercontinental Championship. Look, I realize I'm going to get called a hypocrite here, but in this very one specific case, nostalgia was right. It isn't nostalgia if the past is better, and that phrase is actually featured on Luke Owen's family crest along with pictures of Corn, Long Shorts, The Snares, and Chris Pontius. When Cody Rhodes brought back the classic IC title design, there was much rejoicing because it was glorious. And that's where right. people actually love 
liking the IC title design it was replacing. That's how much people loved the classic IC title belt design. That belt survived for almost 10 years until Cody Rhodes had the temerity to start his own wrestling company in 2019. And completely coincidentally, a few months later, WWE binned the IC title that he brought back. And kayfabe, Sami Zayn, I guess, bought this for his best friend Nakamura. Now I should like this, shouldn't I? Because at least it doesn't have a huge fucking logo dominating the plate, but also yuck a bit. I can't quite put my finger on why this doesn't work. It's total lack of color makes it look a bit visually crowded. The oval plate mixed with the circular middle bump and the circular side bits. It's not dreadful and it's a yeah. damn sight better than a giant logo stamped on leather, but it ain't as pretty as the classic look of the mid-card title. Speaking of number seven, the US Championship. Why is the word champion so big? Why is it so big though? We know that the person holding the belt is a champion. We know that because that's what the belt means. Yeah. Why do you have to have the word so big when we already know? It's like having someone driving a fancy new car up to your house. We all saw you arrive in the car, so we know it's yours. But now you're just walking around the house, twirling the key around your finger and also shouting Lamborghini at the top of your lungs. Now, to be fair, the US title has had a bunch of crap downgrades in its history. The spinner belt was a downgrade from the flag belt, and the flag belt, in turn, was a downgrade from the WCW US Championship. But this one's the dog worst. Number six, the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Now, tell you what, say what you like about WCW, and I shall. They had the single worst book year of professional wrestling in the year 2000, but they did make nice belts. Yeah. Or at least they made belts that look like classic belts, because even as far back as the 90s, WCW were the wrestling equivalent of an old man saying, back in my day. You could rely on them for something traditional, is what I mean, and their Cruiserweight title was exactly that, a simple but effective little recognizable design. It was effective enough that when WWE bought WCW, they chose to keep that belt over their own light heavyweight title. And then they retired it with Hornswoggle as the last champion. That was enough to salt the earth forever, at least until 2016 when the Cruiserweight Classic, perhaps WWE's greatest ever tournament, and that's saying something coming yeah. from me, crowned a new champion and they gave TJP this. It's a toy though. That purple is just so ugly and plastic yeah. looking. I hate it so much. It looks like it came in a cereal box. Fun fact, someone on Reddit mocked up what the belt would look like with traditional black and gold coloring. And look, it's kind of a prototype of the World Heavyweight butthole, isn't it? it? Number five, the Ring of Honor World Championship. ROH's first logo was designed via a competition. The competition won by a teenager, and that teenager legitimately grew up to be Joaquin Wilde. Fun mm. fact aside, they changed their logo eventually to one that wasn't designed by a teenager, because sometimes old things are worse. Here is the Ring of Honor world title that was used in Ring of Honor's heyday back in the 2010s. Isn't it lovely? Ornate, but not visually too busy. Looks like a warrior's prize. Yeah. Then they changed it to this and you know that's okay the stripes are a little bit circus for me that was the belt that bandido had when he couldn't defend the title at final battle 2021 so jonathan gresham beat jay lethal for the classic ring of honor title which looks like this and you know what that's a bit of nostalgia i understand why they did that this would view towards gresham versus bandido to unify the belt gresham won and kept the shittle belt oh, like bad decision. the past i get it but also look at this belt it was, it now was look better. at this one why'd you keep this one though it looks yeah. like a replica a cheap one the red paint is so fucking ugly why does current champ claudio still have a belt based around this one did you lose the other ones? Number four, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. In a lot of ways, TNA was WCW too, including all the Southern Gothic madness, occasional industry-leading wrestling, and Vince Russo's that statement implies. Another thing that they inherited from old WCW was the appreciation of classic belt design. Back when the WWE Championship was spinning, and we'll get to that, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship looked like this. The tag titles, the original X Division title, the Legends title, all look pretty damn decent. Yeah. And then came the Impact Belts. And oh no, they put a sticker on it. They, 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 <laughs> uh, man, I remember uh, watching OSW reviews, um, TNA Saga, especially in um, from, I believe, the uh, Black Rain Saga all the way up to the uh, Battle for Glory 2017. And basically, uh, first it was uh, Impact GFW, and they brought the Global Force title in. And the next thing you know, they just put a little sticker on it. 
Oh God, yeah, it's just they just put a sticker on it, which is too lazy to get a new belt. <laughs> oh man, and wow, uh, this dude. I wonder what Alberto El Patron's doing these days. Just they liked it. So they put a sticker on it. See, back in 2017, TNA, now called Impact Wrestling, was set to merge with Jeff Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling. And they brought over the GFW name and all their titles, and all their titles do not know how to handle the color green. Good Lord, when Jarrett departed the company a mere four months after the merger, Impact became Impact again, so they just popped an Impact sticker over the Global Force name on the world title. It's an awful business. Number three, the WWE Tag Team Championships. Bloody hell, though. Flashback to 2009. On the pre-show of WrestleMania 25, the Colons beat Miz and Morrison to unify the World Tag Team Championships and the WWE Tag Team Championships. For about a year, they were just called the Unified WWE Tag Team Championships and involved the winning team lugging around four belts. The Usos know your pain. Who needs space in their hand luggage? In August 2010, the night after SummerSlam, WWE decided to change that and awarded the Hart Dynasty some new belts. And aren't they shit? Not even yes. motorcycle grandmother Bret Hart could make that copper color look good. They very quickly earned the nickname the Smash Pennies, and what's more prestigious than a Disneyland trinket you can sign to the bottom of a drawer for as long as you're alive? When the brand re-splat in 2016, the copper became silver, which is slightly better, but it's baffling that we haven't had good-looking tag titles for over 10 years now. I'm yeah. starting to become institutional. I'm sure WWE will bring out some new belts soon. Hopefully the classic World Tag Team Championship design, but with Vince's face hot glued on the front. Number two, the WWE Championship. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. That's I will now word. leave five seconds of silence for you all to get over the fact that the spinner belt was the WWE Championship when you first started watching wrestling, and then silence the lizard part of your brain that's trying to convince you that the champ belt was good. Okay, because here's the undisputed title that came before it, and Lord Almighty, what a drop-off. And I'm not even the world's biggest undisputed belt fan. My belt's the Big Eagle, so let's hold that side by side with the spinner belt. Suffering Succotash, son. So many gaudy gemstones. The way it spins so that whenever a ref would hold it up before a title match, the W would always be on its f***ing side. Champ. In fact, it says champ. How humiliating. It's like meeting the undisputed title's teenage son, but then the son refused to grow out of his face for eight f***ing years. Saying the spin about is bad is the most ice cold of wrestling takes, but it doesn't make the sparkly toy any less wank. The big W belt they currently have is loads better, and that's not good. It's just a big corporate key ring. And number one, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not just doing this to make Tempest sad, although that is the main reason why I conduct 70% of my business. The current IWGP Heavyweight title is better than the spinner belt, yes. obviously. But when we're talking about downgrades, this one hurts the yeah. most. The IWGP Heavyweight title, the one that came before the unified one is often regarded as the most beautiful title belt of the modern era, the best since 2002. And then they That's unified the World and IC awesome. titles. Kota Ibushi said, new belt, please. And they gave him this and Kota Ibushi said, oh no, I'm gonna drop this to Will Ospreay immediately. Even a Power <laughs> Ranger would look at this and think, that's a bit camp. From something that looked like it was chiseled out of history to uh. something you'd find in an overseas toy shop with the copyrightless name of Big Wrestle Belt. I suppose it's functional, but shed a tear for the likes of Shingo Takagi or Sonada that they don't get to carry around this, yeah. they're forced to carry around this. It's not as good, lads. It's big, not as good. And that's our list. What do you think is the worst way a company has screwed up a wrestling belt? Let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more of our list, here's one from last week. Just give it a listen, you idiot. WWE intermittently treats the WWE Championship like a big deal, depending on whose waist it's around, which is very strange. You think they would make more big stars? They're committed to main eventing it with every show, raising wrestlers' importance up to match the belt rather than lowering the belt's importance to match the champion. But hey ho, I don't run a wrestling company. I never have, to be clear. I didn't run. Mm. WCPW, the good old days of what culture? Alright guys, that is pretty much it for this reaction. Um Yeah, uh controversy of selection here. I actually like the new uh US championship, but the classic US championship for WCW, great belt, awesome belt, the big go belt uh from WCW as well, legendary, 
the wing angle belt, my favorite belt of all time because guys like Stone Cold, um, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels have worn that belt. And of course, The Rock. But that's like I guess the wing angle either before and after the Add to Era because it was like the rounded Add to Era wing angle belt and well. Uh, and yeah, I do agree. The IWGP belt was, they had like the best belt of all time until they upgraded and then it looked such shit. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And be sure to catch me in my next reaction. Until next time, uh, have a good day or night, wherever you guys are. Peace out.